and by counsel here today. Um, Mr. Tritelga has been charged with two misdemeanor offenses, which we'll be trying today. I must object. I am not the name that he is referring to. I am the living man. The name that Mr. Riley refers to, ma'am, is held by the state in all capital letters and is identified by the state on the state's driver's license, ma'am. I am not the all capital fiction. I am the living man whose mark is that of life. It is called a signature, and the nature of that sigil, ma'am, is the living person. It is never in all capital letters. Mr. Tritelga, you will allow Mr. Riley to continue to go there, and you will have a I must to object, ma'am. Without proper evidence of oath and bond as required, and I am back, ma'am, by 20 United States Supreme Court cases to this end, it should have been brought to my hand more than a month ago, and no evidence has been brought forward of any competency of any of this. I have to speak for myself, ma'am. No one here is capable of doing it, and particularly those that are bar or non-bar. They can only speak, ma'am, to the legal. My interest is to forfend my person's living name. Your Honor, this is an improper objection and violation of the motion. Mr. Tritalga, you are not to be McGraw. Mr. Riley, again. Ma'am? He gets past his 30 minutes. Then you will have Who can tell the living now, man in a commercial now. event such as this? Sir? Who has the right to tell the living man when he can speak and when he cannot speak, what sounds he can make and what sounds he cannot make? Do you understand? He is addressing British law, ma'am. He is a minister on behalf of Great Britain. I'm going to hold you in contempt if you continue to disrupt this. Ma'am, without oath and bond, contempt has already been established here. In the face of all these witnesses, ma'am, where is where is the evidence of oath and bond, ma'am? Look. How do you continue to disrupt? The requirement is right here, ma'am. Okay. It is through all ranks of the court, ma'am. I have done due diligence and due process, ma'am. Eye to eye, I face those who would come against me. I communicated properly. I backed up my work. I backed up the research. It's nice and neat. And I have total failure. I have total incompetency of the court because there is no evidence of Mr. Riley's office, nor of yours, ma'am, nor of this lady's here, nor even the fine police officers that are here today. I have nothing to work with now. Now I'm out here hanging over the abyss. I must make my own way. And you will be allowed that, but allow Mr. Riley. Why, please give me an honorable answer, is a British recognized esquire asking questions in an American courtroom. Why is title of nobility applied behind this gentleman's name that is recognized as being banned from our country in the 1789 Constitution? Is nobody going to stand for our Constitution? Allow Mr. I cannot, ma'am, in honor of the Constitution of the United States, I cannot allow a man who carries British recognition for the purposes of British ministerial law to continue to persecute me. I cannot, ma'am. I have to honor the, the founders, ma'am. I honor the memory of those who fought and died that we could be free of this very type of thing. If I stand up, I give you recognition. Oh, please stand up. Right. Stand up. No, yeah, pick me up. I cannot give you recognition. I'm constrained by the United States Constitution of 1789. Sir, you're a Bozeman native. What are you doing back in the British recognition? You should be ashamed of yourself. Gentlemen, this is an overthrow of the 1789 Constitution, an overthrow of the Bill of Rights. It is an overthrow of Title 26, United States Code, and above all, it is an overthrow of universal law. Would one of you remove my ball tie and return it to somebody in the crowd, please, so that it doesn't disappear from this place? We'll take care of that in a moment, okay? Since so my stuff makes it back in my bag, I do have a duly appointed court representative, ma'am. He has made his way through everything. Okay. He will speak as my voice. 